In this video lesson, we're going to demonstrate how to write mesh current equations for a circuit by applying KVL to each mesh. Consider this circuit shown here, and let's say our task today is to solve for the power associated with any of the six circuit elements using mesh current analysis as a method of approach. Now this will serve as an example of how to apply a four-step process to writing mesh current equations where one uses KVL as the starting point. The first step is to identify the meshes and assign mesh currents. And our previously numbered lesson describes how to do this. That was titled, What are Mesh Currents? But here we see three meshes. So there are three mesh currents, and by convention, they're taken to be in the clockwise direction. I've chosen to label them as I sub A, I sub B, and I sub C, as you can see. Step two, assign a voltage variable with each element, and also, of course, voltage reference signs. That's been done on this slide, as shown with the voltages V1 through V6. Note that whether the plus sign is put on the right side of a horizontal element or top side or bottom of a vertical element is not important at this stage. It's just going to merely affect the algebraic sign associated with each voltage variable. Next, pick a mesh, write Kirchhoff's voltage law. We'll actually apply this step to each mesh separately, but for now let's focus on mesh A. Kirchhoff's voltage law may be expressed for this mesh as minus V3 plus V4 plus V6 equals zero. That is, the algebraic sum of voltages around the closed loop is equal to zero. The fourth step in our process is to express the voltages in that KVL equation in terms of mesh current properties and element constraints. For example, in mesh A, what's that voltage V3? Well, by Ohm's law, V equals IR, or V3 equals 10 ohms times the resistor current. And using passive sign notation for the resistor current reference arrow direction, the current is minus IA. What about the voltage V4? V4 is equal to 20 ohms times the quantity I sub A minus I sub C. That's using Ohm's law and the property of mesh currents. And V sub 6 is seen to be, by inspection, 6 volts. The element constraint for the voltage source is, my voltage is 6 volts. Collecting terms in the KVL equation, an algebraic task, it may be written as shown on the bottom of the screen. So it turns out that KVL for this mesh A can be expressed simply as I sub A times 30 ohms minus I sub C times 20 ohms is equal to minus 6 volts. Say, so let's just point something out now. Note that the quantity in front of I sub A is the sum of the resistors in mesh A. And the quantity in front of IC is minus the total resistor value shared by the two meshes. That minus 6 volts on the other side of the equal sign comes from the voltage source. Though so the I sub A arrow enters the positive reference terminal, there's a minus sign because we've moved it to the other side of the equation. Now we wish to apply those steps 3 and 4 to each mesh in the circuit. Let's turn to mesh B. Kirchhoff's voltage law may be expressed as minus V6 plus V5 plus V2 equals zero. V sub 6 is just equal to 6 volts. It's constrained to be. V5 and V2 can be expressed in terms of Ohm's law and the properties of mesh currents as 20 ohms times the quantity IB minus IC and 10 ohms times I sub B, respectively. Collecting terms and simplifying, as we see on the bottom of the slide, we can now write I sub B times 30 ohms minus I sub C times 20 ohms equals 6 volts. That's KVL for mesh B. In terms of pattern recognition, see that I sub B is multiplied by the sum of the resistance in mesh B. I sub C is multiplied by the minus the resistance shared by meshes B and C. That 6 volts on the right-hand side, of course, is from the voltage source, with the sign taking into account that we've moved it to the other side of the equation. And for the third and final mesh of this circuit, Kirchhoff's voltage law can be written as minus V4 plus V1 minus V5 equals 0. Then using Ohm's law and mesh current properties as before, it may be expressed as the equation on the top of this slide seen here. Collecting terms, we see that the pattern mentioned before occur is occurring for this mesh as well. For mesh C, mesh current IC is multiplied by the sum of the resistance in mesh C. I sub A is multiplied by minus the resistance shared by meshes A and C, whereas I sub B is multiplied by minus the resistance shared by meshes B and C. 
with the satisfaction now of having arrived at three equations for the three unknown mesh currents, and we can solve them by any algebraic method we wish. An elegant method of solution, especially for circuits that have lots of meshes, is to use matrix methods. The bottom of this slide now shows three KVL equations expressed in matrix form. Solving a matrix equation, A times X equals B, where A and B are known matrices and X is an unknown matrix, can be done by multiplying the inverse of the A matrix times B. In that order, matrix multiplication is not generally commutative. Nice to have a computer for that. That's what I've done here. We see that the mesh current values are I sub A equals 250 milliamps, I sub B equals 650 milliamps, and I sub C is equal to 675 milliamps. This is how we obtained the values for mesh currents that we used in the previous lesson. Well, we began the lesson by saying we wanted to use mesh current analysis to be able to solve for the power associated with any element in the circuit. Let's do that for element 4. By the properties of mesh currents, the current I4 shown on this circuit with the green reference arrow, here is 250 milliamps minus 675 milliamps or minus 425 milliamps. The voltage V sub 4 is I times R, or in this case minus 8.5 volts. Now power equals current times voltage, which in this case is plus 3.6125 watts. Power has a positive value here, meaning the resistor is absorbing power. Mission accomplished for element 4. Let's find power for another element, say element 6. The current I6, again shown by a green reference arrow, is 250 milliamps minus 650 milliamps or minus 400 milliamps. The voltage V sub 6 is constrained to be 6 volts. So power for element 6 equals current times voltage or minus 2.4 watts. The minus sign means that source is delivering 2.4 watts. Well, we could continue calculating powers, but now I'd like to return to the pattern we saw emerging when developing current equations starting from KVL. I'd like to show how that pattern can be used to write mesh equations by inspection. That is, without even having to think about KVL, Ohm's law, and so forth. Works really well when we have only voltage sources and resistors, as in this circuit. Look at mesh A. Generally, the mesh current equation there will consist of something times IA plus something times IB plus something times IC equals a voltage value. This figure shows what those somethings are. For mesh A equations, I sub A will be multiplied by the sum of the resistance in mesh A. The sum of the resistance in mesh A is just 10 ohms plus 20 ohms or 30 ohms. I'll simply write that value in the first bracket as thus. Continuing with the equation for mesh A, what goes in front of the I sub B term is the sum of resistance common to both mesh A and B with the minus sign. Well, there are no resistors common to both mesh A and B in this circuit, so the value is zero and we enter it as such. Continuing, what goes in front of the IC term in the mesh A equation is the sum of resistance common to both mesh A and mesh C with the minus sign. That is 20 ohms for this circuit, and we enter that value. What goes on the right-hand side is the sub of the independent voltage sources in this mesh using a clockwise direction. And in this case, that's going to be minus 6 volts. And with that, we have the same equation we obtained earlier in the lesson using KVL and element constraints, except this time we wrote it in just one line by inspection using the algorithm shown. For mesh B, we have a similar algorithm. What goes in front of the I sub B term is the sum of resistance in mesh B. What goes in front of the other mesh currents is the sum of shared resistance between mesh B and the mesh in question, with a minus sign. So we have 0 times IA plus 30 times IB minus 20 times IC. And the sum of independent voltage rises in mesh B on the other side of the equation is plus 6 volts. And then this screen shows the algorithm for mesh C. The term I sub C is multiplied by the sum of the resistance in mesh C, and the other mesh currents are multiplied by the shared resistance with mesh C, with a minus sign. Again, we have the sum of voltage rises on the right-hand side. For, so for mesh C, it is minus 20 ohms times IA, minus 20 ohms times IB, plus 40 ohms times IC, all equal to 9 volts. So we end up with the same matrix equation as before. 
Now with a little practice, you can look at a circuit like this and write such a matrix equation by expansion, and it's expandable to any number of meshes. What if there's a current source in the circuit? Here, for example, the 9 volt source uh, that was in mesh C has been replaced by 900 milliamp current source. Now, we can still write KVL in mesh C. That would be, for example, minus V4 plus V1 minus V5 equals zero. And we can still say that V4 equals 20 ohms times the quantity I sub A minus I sub C, and the V5 equals 20 ohms times the quantity I sub B minus I sub C. But what about V1? We have no element constraint for that. The current source only insists that the current be 900 milliamps. There's no constraint on voltage. But wait, we know what IC is by inspection. IC must be 900 milliamps, so it's not really unknown. For mesh A and mesh B in this circuit, the equations we had developed earlier in the lesson are still valid. Nothing's changed in those meshes. However, for mesh IC, instead of using the algorithm, okay, uh, minus 20 ohms times IE, minus 20 ohms times IB, plus 40 ohms times IC, etc., we should just note that IC is equal to 900 milliamps. And then from that, with these equations, it follows that I sub A is equal to 400 milliamps and I sub B equals 800 milliamps. So this is one way to handle current sources with mesh I analysis. Other methods are source transformations and super meshes, but those are not going to be discussed in this lesson. We will end the lesson with that example, and it's time for some summary comments. We described a method for writing mesh current equations via a four-step process. Kirchhoff's voltage law, Ohm's law, and the property of mesh currents were used toward that purpose. Now, we did a three-mesh example circuit, but the methodology is valid for any number of meshes. Also, by noting a pattern in the equations, we described an algorithm that allows one to write those equations more efficiently by inspection directly from the circuit. We also noted that current sources do require some special handling in mesh current analysis, and one such method was demonstrated. Thank you very much for watching the lesson.